Well, greetings to you. I'm Bishop Kirby Clements with Pastor Van Rose here, and we are, we're church people, but we're kingdom people. And we've been very much concerned about something that's in our heart called the third coming of the church. I don't want to be presumptuous in saying the third coming because, of course, I was asked when was the first coming. Uh, I think the first coming was at Pentecost. I think the next coming was probably a series of reformations that occurred. And uh, you can go from Luther all the way up through. And maybe the third coming may speak from a contemporary context of what we think the Spirit of God is speaking to us now. And uh, I felt for some time there were at least five emphases. Uh, these things are concerned because when you look at the last hundred years of uh, charismatic activity in the church, it is focused number one on theology. I think there's more no concern about theology. Number two, church government. The emphasis upon uh, bishops and apostles and prophets. Uh, number three, worship. What we do in worship. Uh, worship is uh, not just uh, inspirational should be, and emotional, it should be uh, informational. Uh, number four has to do with the sociology of the church. Then I'd be concerned about what they do in the church. And, and then, of course, uh, the fifth one uh, has to do, I think I mentioned, about governmental and things. Like that. So, uh, Brother Dan, when you think about uh, this idea of the third coming of the church, uh, what, what are some of the expectations that you have? I know history must speak to us. That's right. And obviously, there's some things that we should have learned what worked and what didn't work. Uh, how would you speak to that? Well, um, those who have studied church history uh, understand that there was a, um, uh, a force that Paul was fighting against. It's called Gnosticism. Yes. And that is, uh, there was a mixture of trying to mix paganism, Judaism, and Christianity all together to get a hybrid mm -hmm. type of concept. Mm -hmm. And I believe that the church has to be careful about the neo-Gnosticism. Mm -hmm. There is a new resurgence of that mixing together of uh, the, uh, the norms of society, mm -hmm. Uh, whatever society says goes, it should be fine, and, and mixing that with scripture mm -hmm. and trying to justify certain things. Mm -hmm. And I think we have to be careful that we have to get back down to the absolutes of the Christian faith. Ooh, I can say I believe that totally because see, one of the things I think is missing today is um, is evangelism. Yes. Uh, the fundamentalists list that as one of the uh, seven things that you have to believe in addition to the deity of Christ and uh, the reality of sin. They mention the responsibility for evangelism. Yes. Uh, what do you think is the reason why that is the crime uh, in, in our contemporary society? Well, of course, evangelism uh, basically is just telling the good news. Mm. What is the good news? Uh, Jesus said, hey, I got good news for you. There's a new kingdom. Mm -hmm. There's a new king. Mm -hmm. And of course, he spoke that into a world where Israel was looking for uh, to be released from the bondage of, uh, of Rome. And, uh, and so, uh, in, in the world today, there's a lot of bondages. And we have to say, hey, we have good news. There is good news now, because the kingdom of God has come in your midst. Mm -hmm. And I believe we have to reach into society in every dimension. Uh, Jesus said, uh, there's two kinds of leaven. There's good leaven and there's bad leaven. Yes, yes. And I think we have to be the good leaven. Mm -hmm. The kingdom of God is like leaven. You put it in, you mix it in the lump. And I think we have to be that light shining in darkness or out of the midst of darkness. And that's evangelism. Well, I think, you know, when, whenever the word evangelism is actually used in scripture, it always has to do with uh, soul, soul winning, yes. uh, church planning, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, what I call um, uh, culture transforming. It's one thing to start a church, but it's another thing to impact the world. And I've been very much concerned about why there's been such a decline in mm -hmm. evangelism. Churches have grown now uh, a lot more by. Um, Church transfer, transfer rather than mm -hmm. church growth. As you know, I wrote a little piece called uh, "Avoiding the Ten Coming Church yes, Crisis," right. and uh, one uh, one of the things I, I listed in there is first of all uh, the absence of a ministry philosophy, mm -hmm. but uh, and then the third was what I call a serious neglect. That is, um, uh, we don't talk very much about the resurrection mm -hmm. and the implications of it. And then the third was what I call a um, um, the, the negligence. I think. Uh, in our preaching agenda. Mm -hmm. uh, we tend to focus on narrow aspects. And there's something called the full counsel of God. Mm -hmm. uh, to me, at this third coming, we have to get back to the full counsel of God. What, what does that mean when I say full counsel? Mm -hmm. full counsel? The full counsel of God, you have to read the whole of Scripture, from Genesis to Revelation. Mm -hmm. And you have to see what is the character, the nature of God, and how does he approach uh, unbelievers. Mm -hmm. And that's what evangelism is. You're approaching unbelievers. Now, the old style of evangelism, you knock on doors, you give somebody a track, mm -hmm. and you threaten them with hell. Uh, mm -hmm. And there has to be a different approach than that. Mm -hmm. Completely, totally different. And uh, 
you know, God never threatened people with hell. Mm. Jesus walked amongst them and said, hey, i got a better way. Mm -hmm. And I believe that's part of what we have to do, showing people that there is a better way, and God's way is the best way. Well, as you can see now, this whole idea of the third coming and the next coming of the church, uh, just terms, I hope those terms won't, won't bother people too much. What we're saying is that um, there's a reformation, there's always an ongoing reformation, change, and uh, we have to advance. But in doing that, we have to allow history to, uh, to talk to the future. I mean, yes, to look back. And you know, Bishop, you wrote a book on spiritual intelligence. Mm -hmm. It's a tremendous book. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and it, it really helps people to comprehend some things. In fact, one pastor, uh, one bishop in his church, has taken it and is teaching that book. And mm -hmm. I think it's important for the people to comprehend that. Well, we, as you see, we've been doing a lot of writing, Brother Dan, and uh, for both of us here in, uh, in our teaching. And it comes back, once again, to the central theme, the kingdom of God which deals with laws and legislation and government. But the church deals with meetings and worship and congregation. And those two must interact. Mm -hmm. And the agenda, I think, for the church is determined by the kingdom of God. Yes. And so that's why how you see it. Then. So if you, if you had a word to say to uh, maybe some of our viewers out there about emphasis and about the idea of the kingdom of God, because the word says, seek ye first. Yes. Right. But how would they seek it first? Mm -hmm. well, I think it's very important for you to, first of all, begin to to have a pattern of reading through scripture. Mm -hmm. And uh, as you do so, just begin to ask the Lord to show you and, and help you to comprehend what his kingdom is all about. And there's many good books that are written on the kingdom. In fact, in, in one of my books that I wrote, I gave some examples of some of the different books that they can look for. And begin to do research on the kingdom of God. But most importantly, it has to be practical. It can't be ethereal. How does God's kingdom impact you on Monday morning when you're going to work? How does it impact you when you're with your family? All of those practical aspects of it. But as you begin to read uh, scripture, and of course, you read the gospels, mm -hmm. Jesus is the king of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. If you just take those four gospels and begin to read what he said about the kingdom of God in those four gospels, it's just amazing how God will begin to surface inside and understanding for you and for your family. We'll be talking about the third coming of the church, which is distinct and inseparable from the kingdom, and because the church is not a building, the church is people. Yes. So maybe what we're talking about is the third coming of you. Mm -hmm. Third coming of you and what that would entail. I think some exciting possibilities. So uh, Bishop Kerber Clemens and Pastor Dan Rhodes talking to you about something that Jesus loved. His church. He yes. said nothing would overcome it and it would not fail. So the Lord bless you. Look to see you again in our workplace. Yes.